Hey friends, it's Laura with Laura B. Floss Tube. Welcome and welcome back. I'm so glad you joined me today. It is week 13 in our Be Happy Quilt Sew Along. We're going to be working on our coral flowers, our pin cushion, and our three trees blocks this week. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of put the layout up here. You can see that once we get done with this week, we'll be able to put row four together and most of row five will be together as well. So this is going to be some great progress to be seen this week. I'm also going to go ahead and put the supplies list in there. Just just the so simple shapes that you need, the background pieces that I'm cutting, and the bias tapes that you need. Now remember, all of that information can be found in my cheat sheet, and you can get that in the description box down below. So let's talk about that coral flowers block real quick. It has a lot of circles in it, and I know that's the one thing you guys ask me about the most. How do you get your circles so smooth? How do you get those to turn out correctly? How do you get your circles to be a circle? And how do you get those all around your sewing machine without just having to stop a million times? So we're going to going to go through the different sizes of circles this week and I just want you guys to pay attention to how often I'm stopping, the speed of my stitch and how I'm pivoting and things like that as I'm moving around with those circles. The three trees block also has a circle in it so we'll get another little practice in there and also the pin cushion block has a circle for that cute little pin cushion topper on the jar. So there's lots of circles to be done this week so if you have been practicing your circles this is the time you're going to get it in. We're going to head on over to the sewing machine and we're going to actually do some of those circles together. I'm going to try to point out some of the tips that I can share with you as I'm doing them, but I really just want you to pay attention to the speed, the amount of time I'm taking to pivot, and just how I'm working the fabric around on that machine. The coral flowers block has four different size circles on it, and I've actually already sewn the size two but I wanted to show you size three, four, and one, and we're gonna go from largest to smallest, and that way you can see just how I kind of adjust my technique for each one of these sizes circles. So the four is gonna be our easiest one to do. So if you haven't sewn circles before, start with a larger circle. Don't start with these little bitty ones. You're gonna to wanna to go with a little bit bigger of a circle. I'm using the Juki DX7. I have my straight stitch set at 1.8, so it's a tiny stitch. That's what I like to do for um, applique when I'm sewing the fabric to the interfacing, just because it gives me a really tight stitch that holds up when I turn it and, and push against that seam. And it also gives me the ability to make a little tighter of um, curves and direction changes. All right, so here I have just my needle down through the line on my size four circle. And I'm gonna sew and I want you just to pay attention. This is gonna be real time, I will not speed it up. Okay, so a couple things I want to point out there, besides the fact that the interfacing turned up on me at the end, um, but just pay attention to where I'm placing my hand, my fingers, and just know that I have pressure against that. It's not just laying there like it's all hanging out. I actually have some pressure against the fabric and against the sewing machine um, plate in order to make that fabric just swing around underneath my needle. So now we're going to go to the size three circle and it's going to be just about as easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and clip off this larger one just so it doesn't get in the way. And again, that was real time. I'm just keeping my fingers close to my um, presser foot with some pressure on that just to make that fabric just turn around in a circle underneath your needle. All right, so now we're moving on to our smallest circle. And if this is the one that's going to cause you the most pain and anguish. And you might be able to see right here that I am not always great at it either. Sometimes I get off, just go around the circle again, and you can make it, um, you can fix it. Now just notice that I am definitely going a lot slower with this size circle. I'm actually pivoting with this one. I don't just drag my fingers around. 
If you want these to turn out good, you just need to go a little, you just need to go slower and just know that you're gonna pivot and make sure you sew over where you began. And that's all there is to it. Now I'm gonna cut all of these out, flip them out and press them at the ironing station and that's where I'll catch you next. I have all my shapes um, sewn and turned and pressed and I actually have the pin cushion and the three trees block put together. But I just wanted to show you a couple things I'm gonna modify on the coral flowers block and the way that I'm going to make this a little easier on myself to lay it out. So I've taken my background fabric and I have pressed it in half on the diagonal both ways. So when I open it up, I'm gonna have this X to follow for my um, flower stems. Now, the problem with my stash this time was that I did not have 18 inches of bias tape like the um, guide calls for. I only had about 12. So I decided that instead of making the X go all the way across, even underneath that center flower, I just cut my 12 inches of bias tape into four segments and I'm going to use it and just come out of the circle. So I've pressed my circle in half as well both ways and I'm just going to line those lines up on my X and that will get my circle perfectly centered. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of dot of I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue right here in the center and press that down and that's going to hold that flower in place for me. Now this block measures 12 and a half inches, it's 12 inch finished, so I want to make sure that this does not come out further than 12 inches um, for my flowers that are going out this direction. So I'm going to grab my 12 and a half inch ruler and lay it right on the top of my block. All right, so I have one diagonal line on my block and I can actually just take the corners and line them up on my pressed lines on the um, background fabric. And this is gonna give me a good way to know how big my flower can be without being too big. And I know that I wanna be about a half of an inch in and I'm just gonna lay my pieces on top for right now because I just wanna see if my stems are gonna be long enough. Now remember I cut these into um, four equal lengths. So if I put this here, yep, that will be plenty of stem. Um, so if you're in the same boat as I am, just know that 12 inches will do it, but I wouldn't go much less than 12 inches. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna put my little stems into place. They're gonna get maybe about half of an inch underneath this um, center flower and that's all that they can um, go. Otherwise, there won't be long enough for my flower. I really do love being able to just press the fabric um, and use the lines that I press in order to line things up rather than having to measure everything out all the time. And this way I also know that these are definitely um, evenly spaced and going the right direction. Now I'm not gluing anything down yet, but I will go ahead and put my four circles that are the outer part on the um, stems. And then I'll use my 12 and a half inch ruler to make sure that nobody is out any further than they need to be. Um, and that they're basically symmetrical all the way around the flower. And they are not, <laughs> so I have some adjusting to do. Um, I am going to use my 12 and a half inch ruler, as I said before, and just make sure that everything is in half of an inch from both um, of the sides. So this one just needs to move down just a smidge. All right, and 
now I'm going to carefully lift up my ruler, keeping this in place, running some glue, and pressing it into place. And then I can start another corner. So I'm going to work my way around and then we will catch up on leaves. All right, so for my leaves, I'm gonna do another little cheat, and I'm going to use one of my other square rulers to kind of determine where I want my leaves to be. So I want them to be evenly spaced down the stems as well, um, and I'm just gonna use this ruler to see how I want them to look. And so I'm gonna be using a four and a half inch ruler. I'm gonna put that over my center block, making sure that I am centered on that. So I have about a quarter of an inch all around all the sides. And now I can just take my leaves, take them out from that point. eyeball that make sure they're even since these leaves are big you can um, kind of play with them a little bit and just make sure that they're the way you want them now obviously you can go straight out or you can tilt them, that's up to you. I'm going to hit that just a little bit with my iron to set the glue and then we'll head over to the sewing machine. We are at the sewing machine and we're going to start sewing down our coral flowers block. Um, I have gotten the other two blocks pretty much done. A couple things I'm going to share with you, but I thought we'd start with this one first. Um, I do have my machine set on the zigzag stitch that I typically use for applique. In case this is your first video with me, I do have a Juki DX7. I use the zigzag stitch and I adjust the width to 1.8 and the length to 0.9. So it's a pretty small little zigzag and I'm just going to start right here in the center and I'll show you why I want to start there in just a moment. But let's get started. Now I'm just going to jump on over here to catch the next stem. Now I'm also going to show you one other thing you can do to kind of save a little time so you don't have to start and stop so often on this one. At this point, I'm going to pivot and I'm going to go around this leaf. Again, I'm going to pivot and continue up the stem.
So let's talk about appliqueing circles. Appliqueing circles is going to be just like sewing the circle. It's just a matter of keeping pressure in the right point, going at the speed that you can control, and practice. So I like to do the center circles before the outside circles, just in case any of the fabric in the background starts pulling or anything. It will be um, a lot easier to deal with if I go with that center circle first. So now you're gonna notice on these little circles, I definitely go slow. I pivot, I stop. It takes a lot more uh, maneuvering of the fabric and turning because you're going in a very tight little space. Now when I get to this outer circle, I can definitely go faster. It's a bigger circumference to go around and so you won't have to pivot as often and um, you're going to find it easier than the small circles. The entire background still has to spin 360 degrees, just not as quickly. Now I've done the center uh, inner circle already, but I'll do that outside circle because this one's even bigger and you're going to see that, you know, it's even easier than the ones out here. All right, so I'm gonna get the other three done and then we will meet back up for some pin cushion fun. All right, so our little pin cushion, according to the cutting guide, has 11 little pins sticking out of it. And I'm just gonna tell you that I don't want to do 11 pins, mostly because um, that means I have to sew on 11 pins. Now this block finishes at four by six, I believe. So it should be six and a half inches tall. I am just going to use my Omnigrid um, seam guide and I'm just going to draw a few pins in it, but not 11. <laughs> Now, obviously, you draw as many pins as you want. I just don't want to have to sew that many on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, well, I, I have basically 11. All right, so I'm going to use a stitch that's on my Juki DX7. And if you have the Juki, it's the number nine stitch. It's the one um, that looks like this on your um, display. You just hit number nine and it's there. And this basically is just gonna give me kind of a triple stitch. So I'm going to just start here and start sewing on my lines. Now remember that we're gonna be adding buttons to this. Now I don't add my buttons until after it is quilted. And so I won't be putting those on today. Um, but you can keep that in mind when you're stitching it because it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect.
You do want to try to roll, give. You do want to try to keep your lines relatively straight because nobody wants bent pens. blocks you're going to get a good press we'll trim them down and put row four together wow we are really going to feel accomplished this week we are going to have all of row four and most of row five put together we only have two more blocks to go after this For row five. Um, we're going to assemble our hexi flowers and our pin cushion first. Then we're also going to assemble our little hen and our three trees. And those two rows go together. Now when you're looking at your three trees and your hen, the hen and the hexi, the first hexi flower, actually, uh, their seams will nest. Now this section can be sewn to the flower box that we created last week. And all of that can be put together with the cherry turn dash and the two pinwheels. Told you a lot of this row is gonna be coming together this week. So the last thing before I press that we're going to do, I'm going to grab row three and sew it to row four. Now looking at the cutting guide, the block layout guide, we have row three and row four. And when you go along there, you can kind of see that not many of these things line up. The only thing that we have lining up between row three and four is this first flower pot and the bee. The rest of them, none of those seams will nest. And really, on between the fourth and fifth row, we have a couple places that it will line up. Uh, but this row is not really lined up with anything in row four except for that first little block. So that's the only place that we have that we want to make sure that we nest our seams and get those evenly matched up. The rest of the row, we will just kind of um, hold and go. You know me, I'm not a pinner. If you want to pin this, please, please, please do so. So I'm going to press our seams and get those back on the design wall. We'll do a wrap up. So let's go over a few of the modifications I did this week and a few tips that I shared just so you can make sure not to miss them. First of all, I've talked about the circles a lot this week and just how to sew them, how to flip them, how to press them, how to find a good way to place them and then applique them down. So just keep all those things in mind and be patient with yourself. Circles take time, but you can do it. And then, let's see, we talked about the pin cushion block. The one thing I didn't mention, I changed this a little bit. You're supposed to embroider a B on the jar, and I didn't want to do that. So I just chose a fabric that had a nice little print to it, so I'm not going to stitch anything on my jar. I did use the machine to stitch all of my pins, 
So all I gotta do is add the buttons after the quilt is quilted. The three trees block came together really easily and quickly. If you need help with the three trees block, go back to, I think it was like week two or three where we did the two trees block in the first row. So that's where we're at, guys. We don't have much more to go. I hope you're keeping up or at least taking note of all the tips and tricks I'm sharing along the way. Um, I hope that you found something useful in every video that I've done so far. We only have two or three more left. So I'm gonna do one more video for the last two blocks. We'll do a video for the borders. And then I may do a video when I'm quilting it or after it's been quilted to talk about that binding and sleeve. So that's where we're at. We are wrapping up the Be Happy Quilt Stitch Along. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Until next time, please find joy in all you do. Find some time to carve out for crafting and creating. And make sure it's always happy stitching.